Hi there guys. I am working on this setup. I'm, I want to be tight today because I want you to see what's going on. And I also want to be in a spot that I can see myself. So today is the third day of working on this, or no, it's the second day. It's the second day of working on this still life setup for my art league master copy and still life with oils class and we're working on so the way the way i organize this class it's taught via zoom is that we the class as a whole copies a master copy and then we create two additional still lifes after, um, after we spend three weeks doing a master copy. Oops, I'm sorry guys for bumping things around. And, and so we're, we're in the, the, we're in still life number one for the class. So that's what we're doing right now. And I'm setting up, trying to get things, um, let's see. I'm trying to see something. Let's see. It's not letting me do what I want to do, but that's okay. Let's see. Nope. Um, so, I am... So, yeah. So, this morning I started working on the second layer and kind of doing a refining layer. And with everything you know when you're painting with oils it's you know it's always a give and take it's always a a back and forth of painting with like emotion and zest and energy and then slowing down and then painting with like um, delib deliberate and methodical thought and uh, you know, for me, I'm always, I'm always trying to walk that fine line because I want, you know, I want my paintings to be expressive and have my brush strokes pre presented and, and everything. But I also want my, um, my, op you know, the opportunity to, to make for a, for, you know, a beautiful, interaction and so t and the way the way I the way I work and the way I think is I I start off strong and then I move on to refining and that's where I'm at today I'm refining today and and you know and I've taken a lunch break so it's been it's you know, it's been about an hour since I've looked at my painting. And so every time when I come back from looking at my, you know, after actively working on my painting, I realize that I need to, you know, kind of like clean things up. Whoops. Clean things up and, and look at things. And so one thing I'm going to immediately do is I'm going to start working on my edge quality. So that needs to be a softer edge. And like there's a bigger highlight right there, but I'm not going to put that one in just yet. I want that that will come as I as I move forward. And the pewter that we're doing is a lovely piece of pewter that um, it's one of my favorite favorite objects to paint. And so, and what I love about painting metal is that there is just so much to to slow down and look at and and absorb and you know think about and what i think what makes a really beautiful metal ob object paint a painted metal object is when the artist really does incorporate all those shifts in color and temperature and value and um, you know, they really make for this. How long will the paint be able to be worked when you come back to refining it? Well, um, I use lead white, so it, it's, you know, it, it, it's pretty much wet for the day, but then it sets up tomorrow. So I, you know, I, I try to keep my, my focus 
zeroed in so that way I can make for the the best um, shapes so got this green apple that's reflecting and there's green apples up here reflecting So, so I'm just going through, you know, reestablishing, refining, making things read a little bit better, like trying to see what needs to be cleaned up, what needs to be expressed more. Uh, and it's, you know, there's really some wonderful shifts in value and color and like I use I like to think of color and value very s together yes you know it's a good idea like if you're new to painting to separate the two and to think um, like you know analyze what that value is but then I think it's also really important to then immediately think about the color the color temperature how um, how to make things expressive and and like you know I paint realistically I'm not you know I don't try to obliterate the form and and or the sense of shape and and feeling of a painting or of the objects I'm painting so color form value are all very important considerations with a painting. So I am, I'm just having fun, like really making this, this paint, this um, setup colorful and trying to make it as bright and colorful as I can. Now I have a highlight right here and I'm going to slowly consider putting that in, but for now I'm working on other aspects of, of the composition. And there's, let's see. So thank you guys so much for sh showing up. Sometimes I can, it's interesting. trying to get to where I can see all your comments and everything, guys, in a, in a better way. Hi, Bonnie. Nice seeing you. I'm glad you joined today. So, it's, I love connecting with you guys, all of you guys online. So, thank you. So, thank you for saying hi and stopping in. I really do um, appreciate and value all of, um, you know, all the support y'all lend me and I appreciate it so much. Um, so, so I'm, I'm really kind of right now just fiddling with the, the setup and, um, so I need to get my high, start getting my highlight in. It's like right here and there's, you know, there's a little bit more going on. right here, so I need to lighten that, and lighten that. So, and then there's lighter value right here, so I'm gonna get that in and play around with, with it. Okay, so 
So that's working out. I like how that is. So when you're working with highlights, it's never going to be a white. Always try to seek out that color that you might see in, in a highlight. So you know, I see a little bit of a vibration of pink. And so I'm going to start off with a, a mixture of pink and white. And it's actually pretty deep in value. I'm not going tr tr too light too fast because you build up to that. And in fact, actually, the really light values probably will show up, you know, like an, another painting day. But I want to get this kind going. And then I see a bit of like green yellow. So. I'm going to put in a green yellow kind of highlight that I see. And I'm painting wet and wet. So that means I need to, as soon as my brush starts to get yucky, I need to, um, I need to make it deeper. And so I am working. So I'm really liking how this is coming together. And yes, I know I need to like probably make that just a little bit lighter. And see, as soon as my brush picks up, I flip over and I carry on. And I, I really like using whites that are transparent. So, or more transparent than say lead white or um, titanium white. So in the past, like right now I'm using Kremnitz white as my, as my white. And it, and what's important is, so like I laid in that gray over under it and because that's what, um, because the highlights always need to look like, they need to look like their highlights sitting on top of metal. And so you, you can't, you can't like totally rely on I'm going too light. Okay, I don't see any questions, so I'm just gonna keep kind of talking my way through. So I'm gonna work, you know, I got and it's funny now that I've got I'm starting to work, now I can start seeking out some of those lighter values and I'm I'm working on this beautiful linen it's like a medium weave smooth enough to be portrait grade but just a little bit um, too extra toothy with texture so you get I get some really nice textural effects like blue reflection right there. I love that. To me, what makes a painting so amazing is this nuance. And, um, and I absolutely, I just love the nuance that you can accomplish in oil painting by, by ply, applying layers and being unabashed about like so so like you paint one layer down and then like and you know that first layer may be a beautiful painting and you know you did a good job but then to to decide and to like embrace the idea that you know maybe maybe it could be refined just a little bit more and you know and and then asking yourself well what what you know what could i do as an artist to make it even like 
make that refinement even better. And, you know, what could I do to make the ex- the artistic expression better too? So I'm always, um, to me, painting is so, um, is so much spent on thinking about things. Okay, let's see, I just saw your question. So are you working the paint on either side of the highlight into the highlight? I am a little bit, yes. Um, I, you know, I, I always do, I think about it as that, that push and pull and... And so you, um, I'm always, uh, I'm always trying to think about like, well, what, you know, what, um, what will heighten, what will, what will make something feel a little bit stronger? You know, what's, what's the push or pull that I can, that I can maximize to, to make something feel a little bit more dimensional while I'm painting. So I've got this, there's a really bright highlight right here, but I'm going to obliterate my first layer and begin to see. Yeah, Jihad, the, the understanding the color is important. And, and I also, you know, and understanding the value of that color too. So when I say value... I'm talking about the light and like where does it fall in the light and dark value scale um, and like classically you tend to break it down into nine steps with one color one end of that of that value gradient being white and the other the other side of the value gradient being black and then your true mid middle tone say gray is your is that middle number, the middle square, which is five. And then you have four, you know, you have four colors or four value steps on, on towards the light that includes your white. And then you have four value steps towards the dark, which in the ninth color is your black. Okay, so I need to so like this is a very finicky point right here and I've kind of lost some of what I want to do on that edge. So what that means is I need to, I'll need to reestablish my edge, edge by going in with the background color a bit. But before I do that, I'm going to just get that going a little bit. I love how it's evolving. Thank you. Thank you. So... So this term, we have been studying Chardin, which is a wonder, he's a, Chardin was a wonderful French artist, um, 1730s, so the early 18th century, and his works, his works were like genre, um, like simple genre paintings of, of, um, of house like household kitchen items and um, simple things like a maid churning butter or a young child blowing bubbles or playing making building a house of cards um, a card house and so his work was very was it really about like the finding beauty in the everyday the the simplicity and that's that's something that just really appeals to my to my own like sense of, of of beauty and sense of self so it's been a real real pleasure to be able to explore Chardin in class and 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 then like kind of create a paint a still life setup that is very Chardin-esque in in feeling but I'm you know and I've learned I learned I did copy the 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 setup in, that we used in class and then I also um but then like you know you you make a master copy so that way you can learn how to apply those lessons to your own work and so now you know some of the ideas that I learned from copying the Chardin I'm trying to incorporate into my work right now and hopefully hopefully it's happening you know I I think it is I think I'm becoming um, 
some of my my treatments for this painting are softer because that was something that Chardin did so well. Let's see. Yes, T. Bates, I do. I do absolutely recommend um, making master copies. Um, one of the reasons why I find it so valuable is because, um, you know, it's, it allows you to learn how to, I, you know, I think it just allows, it teaches you by, you know, by copying a masterpiece, how to really start to investigate and like reverse engineer because so much about painting is that reverse engineering action activity, that mental activity. And, um, and then you, you know, you use that reverse engineering skill set to, um, to apply when you're in the studio yourself on, you know, working on your own work. And I, you know, I think that's, that's, that's valuable. That is so valuable to be able to do, to do that. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. I think um, doing ma master copies is, 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 you know, they're, they are really, it's really a good ex exercise and experiment. So now the gray is just a wee bit lighter than what I have it in the background. So I'm working on that push and pull. But then it gets darker pretty quickly, so I need to make sure that. Okay. So yeah. So I'm just having fun working, making that work. Um, and what I need to do is I need to... Now I could very quickly be switching to a smaller size brush, but I like to see how long I can stay with a bigger brush. And one of the reasons I do that is that I, because one, I really love brush strokes. I love my brush strokes reading um, and kind of, I get kind of wacky and crazy with my brush strokes. And I, I like having that, that ability. And so by, by um, staying with a big brush, that just means that your brush strokes are more likely to be strong, stronger and more expressive. And the, the amazing thing is you can still keep brush brush strokes, even if you're doing a really tight, tightly rendered painting. Even like when I copied a Dutch master copy, I was really surprised that even in that tight rendering space of, um, of a Dutch floral still life, there was still room to be ex extra expressive with your brush strokes. Um, T. Bates, no, I do not. I do not save these to my feeds. This, these Instagram lives are an opportunity to show Instagram what I do, but they really are for my students. I, um, my my class, the students that are enrolled in my classes will get a recording of this, of this, of this um, Instagram live but I don't save it and leave it up to the public. But thank you for joining in. I appreciate it and I, you're always welcome to join again. If I'm teaching a class on Tuesdays, I usually do an Instagram Live at 1.30 Eastern Standard Time. And then my Great Falls class that I'm teaching on Wednesdays, that starts at 2, um, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Oh, I'm... Um, Vinta, yes, I'm doing, I'm using um, oil paint. And um, Jihad, I'm sorry that, 
you're not able to get much painting in. Uh, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of like waking up really early <laughs> to do it, to get your painting time in. Just like, um, if it wasn't for as much teaching as I'm doing, I don't know if I would have as much opportunity to paint right now. My daughter's keeping me really busy with homeschool and stuff. Um, but I, I am getting to paint a lot because of class. So, okay. I like how that's going. And I, um, and I want to get to, I'm not going to work on the apples, but I do want to work on porcelain and setting up the porcelain for my students. So, and I wasn't able to do that previously, so this will give me an opportunity to to do, to, so in a perfect world, I would totally repaint my apples before I got to my porcelain bowl because I like painting back to front. And what that means is that then, like, so then, like, you know, I, I paint, I paint back to front and then the porcelain bowl is essentially more forward than these apples. But for the time being and for, you know, for time protection and, and guaranteeing that I, I get to this part, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, paint the, paint the porcelain bowl right now. And so typically what I do, like, um, so I would have, I would have my apples fully painted thoroughly before I, before I start working on, and I am going to have to paint like this part of the apples just so that way I can, I have a good clean, a, a fresh wet edge. Um, yeah. Um, turbo photos. And I think that's Beth. If I'm, if I remember correctly, um, what did I use? So porcelain tends to have kind of a blue cast to that white. So I, from what I can see here, I used, I used either ultramarine blue or cobalt blue and burnt sienna because I have some, the, the transparency. And then and obviously there's just a little bit of white in that dark shadow shape. Um, and then, um, and so that's what I would use. And then LLS, what is the source of the dark area t on the right side of the jug? Um, right side of the jug. Right, that's right. Um, sh they're just like reflective shadows. Um, and it might be just a little bit of pigmentation of the pewter that I've got. And then what is the source of the light? If you're talking about right there, because um, I can't quite understand. That's the background. Um, but there's, you know, we've got, I've got reflections. So probably things that were off in the studio that were causing some reflections in, in the, in the bowl. Okay. So I'm going to first try cobalt blue and burnt sienna, which is also transparent red oxide for Yeah. Okay. So, huh. I know I got to get, so, uh, this is, I'm going to use a really fancy term. It's called, um, couching a set, a, an area. So like, for example, in order to paint this area, I have to couch everything that's around it. So that way all my edges work the way I want them to. Um, so that means I need to get my background, bit of this apple in, that background too, so I gotta quickly couch everything. Um, that's the official term, but I also use the term setting up the shot. 
So, um, so I'm going to be setting up the shot a bit. So to make things simple quickly, background. So I'm setting up the shot and I'm mixing up a back, you know, like a, my oak flooring or oak tabletop mixture. shadows I need to put in. So I'm going to do that real quick. Whoops, too brown. Okay, let's see what that's like. That's better. So I'm obscuring stuff a bit. Let's see. Let's get this guy in. Okay, that looks really, that's getting to where I need it to be. Too light, dang it. Not too light, too fast. So I'll mix darker. That looks better. So there we go. And then that's darker. Okay, and now, like this is a little bit darker, so I made it a little bit lighter. So today I'm going to darken that just a little bit, and it actually gets just a little bit darker. And then mix in with white. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Oops, too much, too dark. Okay, so there is, and what I'm noticing is that I made my shadow now too dark. So I'm going back in and I'm lightening my shadow shape just a bit. Try not to make your, your shadows too dark. So, and the same goes for this guy here too. So even, the, okay. So that's couched for the, the background and like kind of the wood of my surface and then let's see okay okay so I am going to couch the greens so so I am striving I want I want my, let's see, I want things to be, yeah, oh, I love painting apples, so in a way this is kind of almost hurtful not to be able to be painting the apples, but, because um, I, 
I love spending time painting apples. Apples are like, are they're so fun to paint. But, so if you notice, I get rid of, I'm painting over, pretty much painting over everything. Um, there's, I want to work on my values and get that a little bit lighter. What's going on right here? And then like right here. So yeah, that looks nice. Couching for the purpose of yes, couching is for the strategic purpose of edge work, edge quality. Yes, um, couching is very important. So, like for example, since I'm not painting into that area or this area, I'm making sure that my brush strokes are kind of they're not they're they're brushy. <laughs> you know, they're not. I'm I'm trying not to use any hard edges. So that way, when if and if I have time, I'll move. I'll go back into those areas, um, but I may not have time. So we'll see. Okay. So now I need to get my shadow shapes of my greens going. Got some. Sh I got. Get that shadow shape in. And then there's a. Slider. I need to be careful. Let's see. There's so much to do. I'm just going to do that. Oh, I like how that worked out actually, too. So then I'll go back in and finish shortly. But okay, so I've got a dark value right there that I need to get in. And then there's a darker value here, so I need to get that guy in. Yeah, that's working out. Okay, so guys, thank you so much for for the people that are tuned in today. I really appreciate it. So we are, um, I am working on a still life demonstration from my class that I'm teaching through the Art League. So for the new people that are, um, yes, happy little tree. Um, the new people that are here, I teach an online class through the Alexandria Art League, and we are we're on our second still life in this in the class. And I'm teaching, you know, I teach indirect oil painting, so that is the traditional way of using oil paint. So think think Dutch still life, Van Eyck, Eyck um, Vernacy, Titian, even. Um, so not impressionist. I'm, I'm, it's not a la prima, um, all in one go. It's um, this is like a deliberate, thoughtful type of of oil painting, and it happens to be my favorite way too to paint. But okay, so I'm almost done with the couching part. So I'm so I can now start getting some of my reds in. 
So I'm laying my reds over what I've done. Wet and wet. And working to, to make them so now so and like the thing is like when you're dealing with with um, apples that have kind of a very uh, like a freckled they have a kind of a freckled surface um, it's a it's always kind of a push and pull of multiple colors so I and like these are complementary colors to oops sorry I'm not the the camera a bit with my shoulder. So I have to be, you know, I have to be careful about not making it too like crazy glowing, but at the same time still capture the vibrancy that is in these apples. I love okay, so it needs to be some I need to find darker value, some darker value colors. And some more cooler reds. There we go. <laughs> okay. So that's pretty. So I need to put a little some reds here. So I'm going to couch some reds in there. And there's some reds here, so I'm going to get those in. Yeah, that's working. That's working. Yeah. Um, yeah, that looks really good. Um, well, right now I'm not using any medium. Um, Fahad, so right now I'm, I used a little bit of linseed oil that I oiled in my, on top of my layer, and but I'm using paint straight from the paint tube because there was a, a fine layer of linseed oil that I rubbed on top of my painting when I first started painting this morning. But I'm not using any medium to at this time. Let's see. Okay, so so now finally I'm ready to work on my porcelain cup. And I have like 15 minutes to get this to a, a level to to show you how I work. So uh, time to So even though my porcelain is white, it's not white white. There's a, kind of a bit of a blue tint to it. And I want to make sure that it's I have enough room. And the shadow shape it kind of stops. about right here. So and I need to carefully get that edge in. And I need to I think I actually have hmm I may not have enough room. I might need to expand. I may have made my apples too big. I think I did. Well, there. Are... No, Stephen. There will not be a recorded version of this for 
for um, Instagram in general. I, I do record and, and provide this for my students that are taking my class because this Instagram Live is an opportunity for me to kind of promote my, my classes that I'm teaching through the Alexandria Art League. And it also gives me like an additional hour of class time for my students of demonstrating. And because I find that when I was learning to paint, how important the, the painting demonstrations were. So my students receive a, a, a recording of this, but, my, but I do not publish this publicly to, to my Instagram feed. Thanks for asking. Yeah, so this works out. So I, you know, I'm slowly re... Aw, oh, thank you, Patty. I'm glad you appreciate it. Um, Fahad, when it comes to varnishing a painting, um, minimum, it needs to be dry to the touch. So depending on the humidity of where you're living, you know, that could be five days to two weeks. Um, but but you still have to be careful what um, varnish you use because if you need one that is considered what's called vapor permeable, so that way, um, because otherwise, if you're using a non-vapor permeable um, varnish, that means that um, you're looking more at like six, six months. You have to, like if you're, uh, what's a non-vapor? permeable varnish like damar varnish is a is an example of a that's a traditional um varnish um it's made with re resin flakes um that's that are then um that are soaked in a solvent like um like pure spirits of turpentine and then and then you, you know, and like Damar, I think it's a type of like beetle shell or something. It's like a really unusual, it's amazing what those, like what the really, like what Titian and Vernacci and the Dutch still life guys had to do to get their, their, their materials. And all we have to do is get onto Amazon or Dick Blick and, or Jerry's Artorama and, and we get our, we're so fortunate. And I do mean it. I, I'm thankful that we don't have to do as much work as, as previous generations of, of artists. We, yep, we are fortunate. Okay, so I'm slowly building up. And one of the things that, um, like... I, the in class, my students know we have a pattern that we are working on that is on this um, or that's on this object um, or on the bowl that we're we're doing and and so. Oh, cool! You're from Oman. Okay, yeah. Um, you know, I've kept. I use. I used to use Damar sometimes, um, and I actually I still do once in a blue moon when I'm really working on trying to be like authentic, authentic um, with with stuff. But um, I'm very thankful that we don't always have to use like things like Damar varnish anymore, because. Gamlin does have a decent um, substitute. It's called Gamvar, G-A-M-V-A-R, and um, and that does you know, and it's and who knows? I mean, the, the Gamlin might it's a supposedly a synthetic, but it might you know it might be like a, just an extremely refined Damar version of Damar, 
that because one of the problems with Damar varnish is that it's non vapor permeable, and so you can encounter some problems with um, if your painting is not 100% cured, um, you can you can have lots of problems with with um, with the, the 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 final setup oxidization of your painting. Okay, so I'm. It's all about meticulous. So we have a pattern on our on this setup, and so I want to make sure that I've got enough room. So using a very you know it's I'm using right now just to make it a little bit easier for you guys to see. I will sometimes experiment and see like do I have enough is my is this big enough am I making it big enough to for what I need that's there pretty much right there oh that's pretty close and then Yeah, I think my my bowl could be a little bit bigger down here. So that helps me shape and and size the bowl in this final refining stage. So I'm getting close to the end of my session, but it gives, you know, I've got enough so I've got enough knowledge to know that okay, I need I need like about that much more room. So I know to bring down my bowl to there. And, and then that helps me kind of set up on the shadow side too. And now also when you're painting, like so, I like to measure, I think that, nope. So let's see if that's my halfway mark. Halfway mark. Nope. So I'm measuring, not touching the canvas because it's all wet. Okay, so that's it right there. So this is my halfway mark. So I can even, sometimes I'll draw my halfway line. And that helps, and then I will obscure it as I go further, but it helps me set up then. Okay. So this is my, and I'm, I gotta be careful. And then like, okay, so there, so that's my outside most line. And then I measure, or that. Okay. And it's interesting, the value here versus the value of my shadow are almost the same. So I'm gonna have to darken that just a wee bit. But for now, and then I know I need more shadow in here. I'm going to get that shadow in. And it's even shadow the way it. go. Okay. And then like the, the pedestal, the, the, there's a foot of this bowl and it, and the shadow side, it's very obscured. So I'm going to 
make that obscured. I'm going to soften that edge. Put in a little bit more This needs to go back. There we go. All right. This is coming together. So I now, you know, I've got my guy. Now, I don't put in the, my blue and white pattern yet. The, that is, to me, the blue and white pattern is so important. You, I actually often will paint the porcelain bowl a few times. And because that also helps kind of give that that visual the visual effect of of like a quality porcelain bowl has kind of a translucency to it and so if you've painted it a few times you'll have and I kind of alter one color my first layer to my second layer of colors oops there's my timer telling me that my hour is almost up and Instagram like kicks me off and then it won't let me do some stuff. So let me stop there and I'll just, I'll stop for the day. But I appreciate everybody. And so now see that stripe, that vertical line that I used to create, I obscure it. And all of the patterning, I obscure that. I don't want that out just yet. And on the tabletop, I obscure that too. And it does look like I probably need a little bit of black. So I carefully work on that. And then go into, you know, back and forth. Oh, you're welcome, Catherine. Thank you so much for, for show, for being here today. I appreciate it so much. And I, you know, I don't want to stop. That's what painting is all about. But as soon as this is over, I got to change mindsets and begin to like look after my, my daughter and and see what she's been up to f while I've been doing this. So I appreciate you guys showing up and you know and and taking the time in your day to watch. I really it's always it's always a treat to me knowing that that um that you guys are checking in and you know do please visit my site, my website. I or my links in Instagram because I actually have several links that have just I've just updated I've got some weekly classes that are enrolling and on on December 15th in the evening 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time I'm doing a live painting demonstration two hour it's a two hour long event through um, through the Art League of Alexandria and it's free to all so sign up for that there's a link in my in my profile links and i just really appreciate you guys showing up making today such a good one and um i'll be here tomorrow doing a, some other type of still life um i won't tell you what it's about it's but it'll be fun and a surprise and let me actually end let me I got. I know it's going to tell me to shut off real soon, but so there's the whole composition, um, and I'm not. I haven't done that apple, and I'm going to leave it as is, um, and this will just be an, an exploration of of painting. Take care, guys. Thank you so much.